Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about my rules for not writing crappy code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are your rules as a software engineer on how not to write crappy code? Well, I suppose that I have, I only have three rules, really, or Let's say it's two rules, but there's a little bit of there's some stuff there's some stuff that you need to know about the first rule. So the first rule of programming is keep it simple, stupid, and that sounds really easy, right? It sounds so easy, and it's not because it's such hard work to keep it simple. Because the only way you can keep code simple is by one part having so much experience that you know what simple code looks like because in order for you to know what simple code is you need to understand the problem that you are solving and I've said that in many videos before if you don't understand the problem that you're solving you're gonna write the wrong code and understanding the problem that you're solving is more complicated than I give it credit because it comes down to one part understanding the company that you're working for understanding the people that you are working with understanding what's most likely going to happen in the future and understanding whether or not you know enough to make that as uh, make an informed call and actually like where should I stop writing code that's also a big problem because if you go too far you're actually even though you're very certain something's gonna happen it might turn out that it doesn't happen and then you wrote preemptive or pre optimized code that's gonna turn out to shit anyway and all these different factors play in in order for you to get this subjective gut feeling which is the experience that I'm talking about it's not just experience it's also a fair bit of wisdom or perception or yeah something like that like you you do need to think in a broader sense if that make if if that's understandable to you in order to actually make that informed gut feeling call this is simple code this is the best code we can write or the simplest thing we can make at this point in time it's the safe bet and that's usually what you want to go for when you're writing software you want to go for the safe bet because in a world because software always changes code always changes so making taking a risk it should be a very calculated risk when you're writing out your software ideally you just want to go for the thing that is going to work really really well and that you can build on top of that's how you should go about it in an ideal world what the code that you write today should act as a lego block or something that you can add on to add to something else and then you can continue that process and just stack things on top when you don't do that though that's where the system falls to shit and all of a sudden you get this blob of legacy code that you have to work around because it's too expensive to um, <clears throat> to fix the thing usually people say that we're gonna go back and fix it later that's in my experience very rare that that happens the reality is that uh, usually you just get one chance to do something right the first time and then the only time ever you get a chance to fix it again is if you start working in an area adjacent to that code and then you might get some capacity to refactor it but you can completely forget about a ugly piece of software that is going to slow down your delivery cycle uh, and stop uh, and hold you back from the deadline uh, when push comes to shoves uh, is pretty much every time so that's the first rule keep it simple and uh, I'm just not doing that justice but that's the best way I can explain it the second thing is uh, tied into this and that is that uh, the model dictates everything if you have the wrong model in your system everything else uh, is go it's just it, everything else is going to become legacy it's just a matter of time i have seen so many times when the scope has changed or a requirement has changed or something like that and it's been inconvenient to the developers and they've tried to create all these special hacky solutions around updating the model the data model and it always turns out the same way every single time it's uh, inevitable because the, it goes to shit pretty much immediately afterwards and I've found in some code bases you just have to remember that oh this value here is sometimes there and sometimes not there it just depends on if it's Friday or not okay 
and in some cases it's gonna the, the model is going to work in one fashion but in this very specific circumstance because we could shim in some values into that model that shouldn't really be there well then we're supposed to do this thing instead and the reason why I think that this is it's like the quickest way to legacy to have the wrong model is because the model is the big it's the fundamental thing that dictates all the logic in the entire system your model is the thing the, it's the data that we have in order to run all our, fu our functions every, th every function uh, every s part of the system needs to have this model and uses this model to, uh, to execute the business logic that, the, that needs to be executed in other words if that model is really shitty then all the surrounding code needs to adjust for that shitty model. It's the same thing with the previous one, like keep it simple stupid. Because if the if you have a blob of legacy code, all surrounding logic needs to deal with that. And the model is the same thing. So what I always say to my coworkers, whenever we have a discussion about improving something or fixing something, the first thing we always look at is the model. Is there something shitty about this model? Because if something is shitty about that model, we know that all the surrounding code and the overhead cost of, to us, like the cognitive cost, because we need to remember all of these special rules about the model and the surrounding logic, well, we need to fix that. So we, go, we, we try to always make sure that if the requirements change or something goes in a new direction, we need to update the model to accommodate the new business requirements. Because we might find that, and this is so easy to do, there's so many people who do this, instead of just migrating the model to something that really works, they're constantly in a state where they're just adding to it and adding to it, even when we get to a point where it's not really natural anymore. Like the requirements are now so different that the original model we designed tw six months ago isn't really a good fit anymore. But we, we, we ignore that and we continue adding and trying to hack things together because the cost of fixing it is too high. But that's the thing. The cost will grow exponentially if you do that. It's cheaper, even though it's a costly thing to do, it's cheaper to fix the model before it turns to shit. Because when the model has turned to shit, then all of the business logic around it has also turned to shit. At least when you get to the point when you realize that this thing doesn't really work anymore, you have stopped at the earliest point that you could and started fixing the problem before it grows exponentially. So what I want you to take away from this is that my two rules for not writing really shitty legacy code is to, number one, keep it simple stupid because the simpler the code that you can make the easier it is to maneuver to understand it to keep it well made and the second thing is always start with the model the model needs to be the best model that you can make it at all times because if the model turns to shit the rest of the system is going to turn to shit have a great day